what is going on everyone welcome back to another video in today's video we're going to learn how to add a index list otherwise known as this list of letters that we see commonly in apps with table views this is the contacts app for example so before we jump into things start by dropping a like down below if you're new here welcome hit subscribe let's open up xcode create a new project and put this together so i'm going to stick with the app template under ios and as soon as this loads here, we'll go ahead and call this project animals, save it wherever you'd like. I shall toss it to my desktop. And before we jump into the code, let's pick a simulator of choice. I will go with the 13 Pro since I've got it opened up here. We'll expand this window to make sure we've got a bunch of room to write some code. And we'll jump into the view controller. Now I've taken the liberty of writing out a pretty basic table view that I'll copy and paste in here for the sake of not wasting everybody's time. And let's actually give this a run and we'll talk through what I've pasted here. So, so far it's a pretty simple table view. First up, we have a struct, which represents a section I've called a group with a section title and a array of animal names. Our view controller conforms to the table view delegate as well as data source. We've got a dictionary of letters and arrays of an array, rather respectively for each letter with uh, animal names in them grouped by their letter, of course. We've got a string for the whole alphabet that we will be using momentarily. We've got a table view and a empty mutable array of models. We set up our data by looping over every single element in our dictionary and just creating one of those group structs that I uh, mentioned two seconds ago set up that table view, layout said table view, and we've got the standard table view functions here, number of sections, rows, cell, and section title for the header. So this is basically what most table views that have a bunch of data usually look like with you know a degree of styling and UI polish on top of it. So how do we go ahead and get the actual uh, letters to show up on the right hand side? There are two delegate functions that we particularly care about. The first one, which makes a lot of sense, is section index titles. Now this expects us to return a array of strings. So what we could actually simply do is return our models and we can compact map this and simply return each of the titles in the group model that this is an array of. So if I give this a run, we'll see what ends up happening. So we actually do see here that we get a bunch of letters and these are in order per uh, how our models are sorted, but you'll notice the letters here only correspond to the data we have. So it goes A, B, C, D, we're missing an E, and then we jump F, G, L, so it's clearly missing some letters. Now, this is perfectly fine, and when you tap on these out of the box, the table view is smart enough to know to which section it should jump per what the title corresponds to. In some cases, you wanna show the whole alphabet and even if there is no section for a particular letter, maybe you just wanted to show up so it looks more complete. And this is especially true with something like the Contacts app. And there's a lot of other use cases as well. So let's talk about how to implement that because that's a little more interesting. So we have an array or a string, I should say, at the top here for our alphabet. So what I can actually go ahead and do here is I can say alphabet uppercase, which will uppercase all of them, of course. We'll go ahead and turn this into an array, which will give us an array of characters for each of the alphabet letters. And finally, we'll return this interpolated into a string. If you go ahead and give that a run, we'll now see that we have all of the letters. So in other words, you can customize what shows up here pretty uh, easily, it's pretty flexible. But one weird thing that happens now is we don't have anything that starts with an E, so what on earth happens when I hit E? It jumps to F. So it looks like it's jumping to the next closest thing in terms of the index list here. Now, there is another function that we're gonna implement here, which is, I believe, called uh, section for section index. And what this is basically asking us is, hey, if there is a custom implementation of this guy, tell me the integer that I need to jump to, which section index for the selected title. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say that the uh, target index will be from our models, the first index where some condition matches. And that condition is that the title matches the title that we're getting as a inbound argument here. 
Else, we can't return nil because this is a non-nullable return, non-optional. So we're going to say if we can't find something to jump to, just jump to zero. So just jump to the top of the table view. Otherwise, we can return our target index and we'll be in good shape. So if you go ahead and give it a run, if I, let's say, hit, I believe T is included, we'll jump down to uh, T. Well, T's at the bottom, so it actually jumps to G, but I digress. You guys get the point. If I hit, let's say, perhaps B, we should jump to B and nothing higher, which is correct. But in this case, let's scroll all the way down. So we're now at G, but let's say I hit E. I know for a fact we don't have any data with E. Let's see what happens. In fact, it just jumps all the way up to A. So you can customize not only what shows up in this index list, but also how your table view behaves when a user taps it. Of course, you can click and drag on these, hence uh, kind of the, the nicety of adding this little index uh, to your table view, especially when you have things with a ton of data. I'm gonna go back to context as the canonical example. It's almost a user uh, requirement. People expect for this to be here so they can easily scrub through uh, organized and presumably alphabetically sorted data. You can sort on other criteria as well. And of course, you don't actually even need to sort this. So for this alphabet, if I go ahead and introduce a shuffle here, because we have this other uh, represented, let's go ahead and force unwrap that. Let's see why this is yelling at me actually. So let's see, cannot force unwrap value. Of course, that makes sense. And let's see, it looks like we get a string element. So let me actually compact map this to a string. Let's go ahead and take this. Let's get rid of shuffled here. What we want to actually shuffle is the array of characters. Uh, but I digress. Because our order here is totally random, it's irrelevant because when we tap on it, we go to that other function and this is going to resolve the index for the section that we need to jump to. So pretty short and quick video, hopefully. Let me know if you guys have used this before in the comments down below. Drop a comment for the YouTube algorithm, really helps. If you haven't hit the like button yet, don't forget to do so before clicking away. Almost at 75K subs, that's my new kind of goal for the near term. So if you haven't shared the channel with anyone that might be interested in iOS, tech, or anything along the way, don't hesitate to do so. Really appreciate it. Connect on all the socials. Thanks again for watching. I will catch you guys in the next one.